Well, a very good evening to each and every one of you. Welcome to this week's episode of Your Manchester. Hello, my love. Oh, do you know, it's great to be back with you. And you put on the sparkle just for me, yeah? Well, it was just the nearest thing on the floor, to be honest with you. That's oh, all well, I can tell you. You look very glamorous, though. Well, always, you're always. A Olivia Newton John from the bottom down. Oh, you better shape up then tonight. Ah, you you better there. shape up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, do you know what? I only yes. came back tonight because we have got a great show in store. It's got one of my favourite things in the whole world on the show tonight, and it's not you. Oh. It's gin. It's not very nice, is it? Gin! 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 And, and Prosecco! Gin, Prosecco, the whole lot. It's all here. Isn't it? Are you excited for tonight's show? That's what I've got to ask you. Yeah, absolutely. We have got a great lineup of guests. We have got former X Factor uh, finalist, Lucy Sprague, and she's doing amazing stuff at the moment. So we're going to be finding out a lot about Lucy and what she's up to. And. Well, if that's not enough, everybody, we are still taking you to. Da, 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 da. Where am I? Uh, Not Land no. Benny Dom, everybody. Benny Dom. Because our show tonight is, I thought what we'd do is we'd bring everybody on holiday with us. Oh, yeah, because we all need a holiday. We right all now, need a holiday, we? yeah. And I thought Benny Dom is somewhere that we all like to go. Well, one of the best love shows on the telly, and uh, we're bringing it live here tonight. So <laughs> you don't need to be in sunny Benny Dom, you just need to be here with your Manchester. Do you know, and I challenge anybody these days to think about Benny Dom without thinking about our first guest. I know. Hey, I tell you, now this man is responsible literally for inventing and sort of reinvigorating a whole lost culture of holiday makers. Don't He's you think? an absolute comedy genius. And I don't <laughs> think that is kind of, um, you know, putting anything on there. No, I don't at all. I don't. Um, and, and he's here tonight, everybody, all the way from Benidorm. Please welcome to our lovely little world, the one and only Mr. Darren Litter. Hello. <laughs> Whereabouts in Benidorm are you? Well, Belinda, I'm about 10 minutes away from Benidorm. I can't actually live in Benidorm because I'd be pulled out of the gutter every um, uh, half an hour. Uh, but here, I know I look like I'm about to face a firing squad, but I'm just in the sort of the breakfast area and, and near the back of my house, about oh, say about 10, 15 minutes away from Benidorm. I thought you were going to say the breakfast area of the Solana then. <laughs> no, I think it's shut at the moment. <laughs> All so the have, have you been in, in that area since lockdown then? Have you been there all yeah. this time? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I knew that um, uh, I took on this bar, as I'm sure I It didn't take me long to mention that, did it? <laughs> very good, very good. Um, and um, Mateo's bar in Benidorm. And um, about a week into it, or a couple of weeks into it, this lockdown was announced. And I think, as you all know, it was, it was like, uh, is this a joke? Is it going to last a couple of weeks? Is it what's going to happen? As it became quite clear that this was going to be for, you know, several weeks, if not several months, um, I kind of made the decision to stay here um, because I knew I wouldn't be able to go. And I, I'm glad I did because it's uh, lovely. Yeah, not a bad place to have a lockdown in, I imagine, Darren. It's really lovely. And, um, you know, it, it's 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 been difficult for everybody, obviously, but... Um, you know, I, uh, and, and also I've got friends here in Benidorm. My, one of my best mates just moved into a, a flat with no um, balcony. And she was like, well, that's going to be okay because, it, you know, it's summer's around the corner and we'll be out all the time. And she's like, you know, a minute and a half from the beach and stuff. And then she spent, you know, two months locked up in her flat going crazy. So, you know, we've got a bit of space outside. I'm very, very, very lucky to be here. So this bar in Benidorm called Mateo's, named after one of your inventions, a character, um, <laughs> played by um, played by Jake Jake Canuso. Yes, there you go. Thank you. That would have been embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, what do we? What do people expect to see in there? Is is there anything of your Benidorm program in that bar with you? There's basically everything that I stole. I, I mean, excuse me, everything that um, <laughs> I was <laughs> left over after the ten series of Benidorm. There was a huge, um, uh, what would it be, like an underbuild, sort of, well, like a big car park, really, uh, but underneath this big building, which was our production company. And um, I got a phone call to say, oh, everything's been thrown out tomorrow. And I was in London, and I said, okay, no worries. I'm jumping on a flight now. And I whizzed up to um, Stansted and got on a flight, and um, I basically took everything. <laughs> 
I think, they, I think somebody was trying to do the dirty on me and sort of go like, oh, sorry, we just found out today. But um, I headed them off at the pass, as they say. So I've got everything. Well, I did have everything in a big storage unit uh, just outside Benidorm, but most of it is now in this bar. Well, I think you more than deserved it. And this must be an actual dream for any fan of Benny Dorm. You're surely going to have them flocking there. I think, well, well, eventually, I think, you know, there's there's still some issues with, I heard today that um, I think the Scottish can't uh, fly to Benidorm, but they can fly to Australia, oddly enough, which is Melbourne has just been locked down again. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get into a political rant um but yeah it's basically with the planet hollywood of, of benetton um you you come in and you're there's the huge neptune sign and you turn a corner and there's mel's thong um up on a, a little uh, podium then you turn another corner and there's the uh, blow and go and there's joyce temple savage's office door which is the toilet um so if anybody wants to go in there we say you have to wait Joyce is firing off a firing off a global. Um, then we go to the bar itself, and the bar itself is the we've recreated the reception uh, from the Solana. And we've do you know what we've um, the the if people come to the bar and they say if they and people a few people have sneaked in had a little preview and they've said my God it looks amazing. The reason it looks amazing is because the lockdown took longer. We were supposed to open on April the tenth. The lockdown took longer and longer and longer, and I spent more and more and more money. <laughs> so, but you know, what's it for if not for spending? It sounds like an Instagrammer's dream. You're just going to get people taking selfies and pictures it, all over the does. place. Yeah. I suppose the obvious choice for people would have been for you to call it Neptune's. What made you go for Mateo's rather than Neptune's? I think basically, um, uh, what I wanted to do, I wanted it to name name it after one of the characters, mainly because they can't copyright people's names. <laughs> uh, yeah. That is the uh, legal uh, side of the story. Basically, everything in the show is, um, uh, you know, from the, the series. So you've got the big original, and, every, and everything's original. We've not recreated anything. It's all the original props and stuff. Uh, so you've got, um, you know, I could have called it the Solanas, uh, the Solana, or you know, Neptunes, or you know, whatever. But I think to be to be slightly different in all seriousness, um, Mateo is one of my favourite characters, and also it's a Spanish name, and we are in Spain. Some people forget that Benidorm is actually in Spain. It's easy to forget, yeah. actually, in some uh, parts of Benidorm. But uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's turned out all right, and we've got a great sort of caricature of. Um, uh, Mateo outside the bar all lit up and it looks very exciting. So Darren, what's happened to these characters then? Are they coming back to the TV? Are they coming back to the theatre? I think the last time we saw them was at the theatre, wasn't it? Was, it was, yeah. Are they yeah, coming well, back? Uh, it's a really difficult question because literally just before I flew out here to start work on the bar, I, and this is a bit of an exclusive for your Manchester, uh, <laughs> I was in talks to do another um, live show uh, I know you enjoyed the live show, uh, Belinda, when you um, came to it. Yeah. Um, and now, because we did the theatre show, I, I had an idea to do something very different. I thought, I don't want to do the same show again, uh, or even the same type of show again. So I kind of had an idea of this sort of like, we used to do these um, charity concerts uh, every year when we were filming. We took um, a big... Um, uh, bar or I think it was in the, it was a, like a huge bar underneath a, a hotel and all of the cast did karaoke for like two hours which doesn't it's sound very exciting but if you're there and you're watching it's a bit like being in Disneyland and watching Mickey Mouse get up and do a number and then goofy <laughs> and, the uh, and so um that was so popular and I thought oh my god if I could do something that's sort of like half concert half yeah. show and just a new sort of experience, really. And we yeah. were literally talking about that uh, to a big um, uh, producer. And um, all of a sudden, this thing of lockdown was... Uh, no, it wasn't lockdown. It was just about this virus. And, and, and then the, the meeting was cancelled. And I thought, oh, they're being a bit, you know, officious or a bit, a bit overzealous. This is nothing's going to come of this. And then very happily trotted off to Spain. Thought, oh, forget it then, you know. And I then... Definitely do with a live show after all this pandemic. We oh, need to gosh, laugh yeah. more. We really. I've had a lot of um, 
uh, feedback from uh, they're repeating a series of it on ITV now, yeah. and I've had huge amount of feedback. So I think the audience is there, and I think that I think they'd come. So if the audience is there, then Darren, why did it stop? Um, the honest answer to that, I think, is um, ITV seemed to want to go in a sort of different direction. They they had a lot of trouble with comedy, trying to make comedy, um, uh, you know, apart from Benidorm. And then a decision, I think, was made to sort of say, right, we're not going to do comedy. If we, if we can't do it, we're not going to do it. So let's cancel the whole, which wasn't great for the head of comedy. <laughs> she wasn't too pleased. But um, I think they were concentrating on comedy on ITV2. That was going to be their sort of... Um, outlet for comedy and then and then they they uh ended but you know after 10 years a show doesn't really get cancelled after 10 years a show gets cancelled after one series but like my show scarborough on the uh, bbc one um, <laughs> but, uh, but 10 years no it just sort of comes to a close i wish we had been told before that's all because i'd have done a proper ending you know um so I don't know, but you know, everything is, people appreciate things when they're gone, basically. Mm -hmm. And there's there's been a couple of, an, oh, how can I put it? There's been some interest in the show. I'll just put it that way. Not not from ITV as such, but um, production companies are sort of asking, and I can't say much more than that, but, um, oh. but I'm literally, I'm fully head first into this bar for at least a year. So don't, you know, nothing's gonna happen for a while. Well, you've wet our appetite with a bar. You're going to have to tell us when does it open. Right. Well, we open. Uh, when do we open? What day is it today? I don't even know what month it is. Um, <laughs> July. Is July? <laughs> July. Right. July. July. We're in the July. right month. Yeah. July the 17th. So I think that's a week Friday. Thing. Okay, well, we'll be flying out for that then. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I, don't know, I think we should. I think there's a. We should do a show from there when we get back to normality. Now, there's an idea. I'm actually doing. I, I sporadically, I did this. Um, I did a quiz on um, a Benidorm quiz on. I'm not very good with Facebook. Um, but we have a page for Mateo's Benidorm, and we did a quiz for five or six weeks and then we stopped because with the the bar work got too busy the the um you know doing the bar and then we're doing one last quiz on tuesday uh, live from mateo's and can um, anyone join yeah. in then if they go to the facebook page yeah I, do you know what it's karen my manageress who uh, is brilliant on all that i haven't got a clue i'm not on facebook so i've just got like a sneaky login of, and it's not even my name. It's all very sort of FBI, sort of Pentagon uh, stuff. Um, but yes, please uh, look for Mateo's Benidorm. Have a look. There's information on there already about the uh, the last, the very last online quiz on Tuesday. And Brilliant. Darren, just before you go, um, Mateo, if he'd be a real person, where would he <laughs> fully be, and what would he fully be doing now? Well, now I think he'd probably be getting ready for bed. I suppose he'd have probably a terry towel in dressing gown. I'm not sure I'm doing a French and Fonda sketch now, aren't I? Um, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you where he will be. I'll tell you where he will be. This is another exclusive because we said we were going to have a soft opening. I don't know if you know what that is, Belinda. Um, <laughs> but we've decided to go fairly hard. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> I can reveal now to you exclusively that on the day of our opening, uh, Jake Canuso will be uh, at the bar. So oh. that's quite I mean, what would you oh. need from an interview with Mr. Darren Lutton? Oh, my hey. gosh. Two exclusives. <laughs> I am made up. I suppose we should let you get back to it, really, because uh, I don't know if you're aware, but tonight I'm going to be sampling a lot of gins. Lots oh. of gins. Well, you see, I was I was trying to be a bit camp with my with my Vimto. I've not. Yeah. Seen, I don't like wine, but I thought I'd put it in a wine glass. Is that not sangria? I thought it was sangria then. Yeah, it should yeah. be. But look, I know you're not allowed to advertise, but it's Vimto. Hey, <laughs> that's branded. Hey then. Um. So, well, thank you very much, Darren, for um, absolutely being fantastic and uh, sharing your stories with us. And I want to go over there. I know. Good luck with it on the seventeenth. It's going to be a smash here. I can tell. Thank you, and I'll reserve you both um, your uh, your Madge cocktail, the Madge, which is so strong, you need a mobility scooter to get yourself home. 
Oh my god! And can you make that? Can you? Huh? Can you make that? Yes. I, well, I'll, I'll, make we'll do. I'll we'll definitely let. make it for you. We might, we might come back to you in a little while's time. We might just ring you up randomly and get you to make one for us. <laughs> for a new segment we're doing for our lovely um, social. So we might get you back in to do that in a little while. All right, time. perfect. I like sound of match. You take care, lovely. All, All right. right. Well, thank you very much, Karen Litton, everybody. Yay! Oh, How exciting. Do you know what? That sounds fabulous. Mateo's. I want to be there. I, I know. Really but do. do you know what the most important thing is about Benidorm for me? What? You go away. It's like Blackpool abroad isn't mm -hmm. it and do you know why it feels different abroad why because you've got the nice weather haven't you well you have yeah do you, do you think the weather's going to be nice this week well they said it's going to be nice at the weekend so let's hope but do you know what i think there's only one person who can tell us who is in the know it's got to be paul rudd yeah paul rudd let's have the weather shall we <laughs> good evening and well and welcome everyone to this week's weather forecast with me, Paul Rudd. And guess what, guys? It's going to be a much better week this week, apart from Thursday. So let's head over to Thursday right now. Thursday is going to be sunny, cloudy and rainy. Friday is going to be sunny. Saturday is going to be sunny. And Sunday is going to be sunny. So I told you we we're going to have a great week. Oh, I'm nearly being blown away here. But that's it for this week's weather forecast. And it's now back to Shell and Bell, live in the studio. And happy gin tasting, guys, for your Manchester. Oh, I do love Paul, even when he's got a bit of the wind going on. <laughs> he just got blown off there, didn't he? I tell you, there's nothing worse, is there? The weather this week, though, it's been a bit... Ooh. Oh, it's been a bit iffy. It's not stopped me running. But this weekend, I'm hoping I can get my shorts on and my sunglasses and maybe have a little bit of a tipple. What it doesn't do seem to know what it wants to be, does it? It doesn't, a but tipple, I know. dear. Did you say tipple? I said a tipple. I hear the word tipple. I'm fully engaged. <laughs> what is going on? Well, this is my most amazing moment of the evening the one i've been looking forward all week when i knew this lady was coming uh please introduce and give a warm your manchester welcome to laura dipple johnston have i said that right laura you have indeed laura dipple johnston Yay! <laughs> Oh, well, do you know what? I, I will say it right before we actually get to consume some alcohol, but then my words might slur, Laura. Um, what, what is this then that you're fully bringing us today then? Because it looks heaven sent. It is. I'm bringing you exceptionally delicious liqueurs from the wonderful distillery, Manchester's best kept secret, Faith and Sons. Yeah, well, tell us a bit about Faith and Sons, because it's it's a brand that I've not heard before, but it is in Manchester, uh, but wasn't originally from here, was it? No, um, so our distiller, Philippe, uh, is a master distiller. He's a perfectionist. Um, he's brilliantly bonkers, and um, he makes the most exceptional liqueurs, going to the extremes to get the best ingredients, and, you know, squeezing the pineapple and and getting the really the the absolute highest quality and the best premium product um at the end of it so uh it's an absolute delight to work with him because you're never quite sure what brilliant creation he's going to come up with next and, and I get have, you, have you two joined forces on this because you own dipple tipple which i absolutely love that name laura it's amazing and so have you collaborated on this range of three liqueurs for the summer Absolutely. So um, we've been working out in the artisan markets for a couple of years now. We know what the uh, the great British consumer is asking us for. So um, Philippe has been making full strength gins, which are absolutely amazing. But we know that the, uh, the, the public really have a taste for liqueurs these days. They're just so easy uh, and delightful to drink. Um, so we've worked um, closely with him to commission these three liqueurs from him. Right, well, we've got them in front of us because, uh, Laura, you kindly sent us these across. Um, and I've been really good. I've not drunk them all week. I thought, when Michelle told me these were coming, I thought they'd be gone by now, to be honest with you. In fact, if she wasn't driving, 
then it wouldn't be me doing this, let me tell you now. We have got, listen to this, Belinda, we've got chocolate and orange. Yes. We have got passion fruit, gin liqueur. These are all gin liqueurs. And then we've also got rhubarb and orange. Now, I've never <laughs> tasted any uh, of these flavours before as a gin liqueur. I may have had rhubarb and ginger, but certainly well, not rhubarb and orange. Yeah. Uh, which should we try first, Laura? Rhubarb and orange is light and refreshing, uh, delicious just on ice or with anything sparkly. Um, you just neck it, is it? <laughs> well, I did it from a glass of ice. Is that what you know? Oh my Go God, that's wrong. Oh, I thought it'd be a shot. She, <laughs> she's just having you on, Laura. Would I, would I let you do that to such gorgeous alcohol? Right, what we are going to do is I'm going to pour some of it over ice because I believe that's over what it ice. Is. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. this is the rhubarb and orange <coughs> liqueur. Go on, Belinda. Well, it smells beautiful with my delightful senses. So rhubarb and orange. So it's a sort of um, wild rhubarb tanned by the, uh, the delightful orange. Yes, it's a contrast. So do I just sip? I think you do. Just sip. Shall I just sip? Audience, should I just sip? Let's let's get some comments. Sip or swallow, audience that's watching at the moment. Sip or swallow. Let's see what you want us to do. I'll just have a quick drink now. Well, that's absolutely divine. Mm. It's it's very refreshing. What a, what a nice combination of things. Um, what's the word? Flavors. Flavors. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. A lot of people have tried rhubarb and ginger, but I just think the orange lifts it and gives it a lovely summery taste. Makes it fresher. Sorry, what was that? Makes it fresher. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'll just... Now, I'm going to sample, uh, Laura, the chocolate and orange liqueur, because I do like a little bit of chocolate, so it sounds really luxurious, this one. Uh, I'm going for oh. it straight. What? Um, I'm going for it straight. Sorry, there's a word we never use on this programme. Go on. Which one's that? Oh, oh, that's heavenly. Oh, what is which one? Was that's that? really good. That tastes. It tastes like a chocolate bar, I but you know, like it. dead posh chocolate. Which one was it? It's the chocolate liqueur there. Chocolate, chocolate and orange. Chocolate, lovely. And that in itself, I don't think I'd put with anything. I just have that on the rocks. Oh my goodness. Oh, do you I know? Did you just down that? Yeah, I wasn't that meant to. But I mean, you put chocolate in front of me. I try and try and make a posh. But that is absolutely delicious because it's got that subtle hint of orange in there, but a really smooth aftertaste. In fact, I feel a little bit warm as well inside. I feel something inside. Anyway, something inside so strong. Is that one of your favourites? Which one out of the three is your favourite, Laura? That That is the liqueur. I really savour um, at the end of the evening in, instead of a pudding. You could almost say it's a slimming um, liqueur because you don't put pudding so fine. Um, you drink it in the same way that you would say a Bailey's. It's got that similar consistency, but not quite as sweet. Um, so put it on ice, or you can make a really naughty uh, milkshake with it as well. Calorie wise, good for you, naughty for you. Oh, I think liqueurs are always going to be relatively high in sugar. Um, so, should be. But we yeah. like a treat. We like a treat sometimes. And I have to agree oh. that if I was having that, it would be kind of late evening, really nice and relaxing and just indulgent. Indulgent is a word. I'm I really the like flavors. that. And do you know, to a, a liqueur... In a nice bottle as well, with nice packaging, is 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 a different thing into these days. Yeah, absolutely. And I sent you um a little miniature set, the gift sets. That's a prototype. It's coming out in a few weeks. But the bottles that um and the labels, they're like um they're like bottles. Um, really, they're five hundred milliliters. Um, so instead of a, a mother's ruin, it's a mother salvation with uh, Faith and Sons. Um, wow. but really. Stylish, and when you have them all out on display at the markets, they just look like a rainbow um, effect. They're beautiful. And how much are, would they be then per bottle? That that bigger bottle, Laura. Yeah, absolutely. Twenty five pounds for the liqueur, 
And then the full strength um, gins that we normally sell, we do delicious cold pressed coffee and mango and pineapple, um, raspberry and rose hip. Uh, they're £33. Oh, now, you're saying £25 there, and I think that is, is more than reasonable because at the end of the day, you are using small amounts, aren't you? So it's not like you have to put a lot in. And what I'm doing here is, I think uh, you recommended it on your website, that you can have some of these liqueurs with Prosecco. Absolutely. Now, this is the best seller. So before 12 o'clock in the markets, we sell this as breakfast gin because it's got so much fruit in it, it's positively good for you. So squeeze passion fruit, are all natural ingredients, divine. After 12 o'clock or when it's a grey day, it's our sunshine in a bottle. Do you know what? And you get your five a day as well. You've got passion fruit. It's fruit. Is it? Is it real fruit as well? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll stick with the chocolate liqueur. <laughs> Cheers! 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 Cheers to you, Laura. <laughs> Cheers to you too. Oh, wow. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is a really gorgeous flavour. Oh, that is really refreshing. Yeah, I love that, and it works so well with the prosecco. It's like, yeah. um, like an alcoholic um, St. Clements. Mm, a little mm. bit. Yeah, Beautiful. but uh, as well, so, certainly in that vein. So move over, box fizz. This is the way forward. Passion fruit martinis. Absolutely. Now, there's something else you need to tell us a little bit about because obviously, with lockdown, we're all a bit kind of like, oh, what can we do of an evening? And I do know. You know, the bars have started to open up now and the restaurants, but we still crave something a little bit different. And you've been doing these live sessions, haven't you? Is it the Dipple Live Lounge? Almost. It's the Tipplers Live Lounge. So oh, the... even better. The Tipplers Live Lounge. That's a, a much better one. What's yeah. that all about? So um, every Wednesday and Thursday, you'll find me popping up the bar where I'm landlady and oh. virtually Facebook. So it's a private group. Um, and because I used to be a, a musician myself and a music agent, um, so that's why I came up to Manchester to go to college, um, I've got loads of friends who are musicians. And of course, we're all in the same situation. Our market's um, finished, their gig's finished. And I thought, let's fuse um, my two passions, really, the music and the spirits, and create um, an online platform for musicians to do live acoustic gigs and for me to have a tipple and enjoy them playing, um, but also celebrate um, some of the delicious... It, the exceptionally delicious um, spirits that I sell in the process. That sounds amazing. And has that been really good? Have there's a response from people who have joined in? Have they loved it? Amazing, yeah. Um, just from the beginning of lockdown, we've got um, 1,800 members of the group. Um, wow. wow. Really, really supportive. Music is incredible. Um, so tomorrow night, I think some of you may be here with uh, the amazing musician Greg Morton, um, who oh. often... Uh, in your neck. We love Greg. Yes. He's in his knee, so he's there. He'll be playing tomorrow night between eight and nine. Although, to be honest, he's great value because he usually goes on past nine. He um, doesn't stop, does he? No, he doesn't. He just no. is. Um, Greg, so wrote, Greg wrote our sad theme for your Manchester, mm -hmm. as we call it, the, the sad version. He's, yeah, oh. friends with your Manchester. If anybody wanted to get involved in that group, how, how do you become a member then, Laura? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so we're just setting up a streaming service like like you're using. Um, so hopefully next week we'll be uh, going via a YouTube channel as well. But initially, what you can do is go to our Facebook group, Dipple Tipple, um, Dipple Tipple Co, and it's a group linked to it. Um, so the Tipplers Live Lounge, or follow us on Instagram, and I'm always popping links and um, uh, promotions about it as well. Um, well, so you've, you've totally sold us on this um, tonight because, honestly, I have to say, I, all three of these have been absolutely delicious. They're if, all new flavours. That's what I like. They're all new flavours. I, like I said, I, I've had rhubarb and ginger. I haven't had rhubarb and orange, and I have to say I do prefer the orange rather than the, the ginger with the rhubarb. My ultimate favourite is still going to be the chocolate because I love a little oh, bit really? of luxury. Mine's really, the really passion good. fruit. Passion I think fruit. that is such a different flavour. I really, really like that a lot. In fact... <laughs> You are a hit. Now, obviously, you were saying that you're doing the artisan markets and a lot of those won't be up and running for a while. I know as also you did the Manchester markets, didn't you, I think, at Christmas. Where can we get these then? Is it is it online we can order some of these? 
Yeah, absolutely. If you follow uh, visit my website, dippletipple.com, yeah. uh, you can find all the, uh, the different uh, distillers and producers. We represent six distillers uh, on there. Um, gin, rum, moonshine, there's something for everyone. Uh, and you can certainly find the Faith Sons liqueurs and the gin and the rum. They do delicious pink rum too. Which I'm well, sure. Thank you. Yes, I have to say that uh, Laura will have to come back. Cheers, Flower. And uh, maybe we could do some rum tasting next time. And when you do some more creations, please let us know, won't you, Laura? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to come back and we can uh, get mix some small cocktails. Well, what we can do, hopefully, if we keep going the way we're going, is next time we can have you actually in the studio with us. That'd be lovely. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, we'll have a, a happy hour with, with uh, Dipple, Tipple and Co. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. That would be great because somebody has to control Belinda and say, you cannot drink out of the bottles. It is not right. It is not sophisticated. <laughs> it's not sophisticated. Forget, forget it. It's it's nice, though. It's not right, but it's OK. There uh, we go. Let's say a big thank you to our lovely yeah, guests there. A big cheers to you. Take care. Cheers. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Right then, everybody, we're going to stick with drinks because, you know, we're having a proper party Benidorm yeah. style. I think we're actually being overly classic for a Benidorm party, to be honest with you. But uh, one lady this week has been wanting to tell us all about the... Um, the <laughs> they can't, no, you'll have to do it now. Go on. <laughs> what? Just roll the VT for Charlie. It's Charlie, for God's Charlie. sake. One drink in your... Mm. Hello again, my loves. It's Charlie Houston Sykes back with another booze and bite. This week, because the weather is not the best, and because we have Darren on the show as well, who I'm a big fan of, let's head to sunnier climes, let's head over to Spain. And I've got two recommendations for you drink-wise. The first up, because it's so easy to make at home, is sangria. Easy to do, grab yourself a jug, slice up an apple and an orange, put it in the bottom of the jug with a couple of tablespoons of sugar. Give it a little muddle, so basically squish it around a bit. Then add in some brandy and give it a bit of a stir. Some orange juice, again, give it a bit of stir and top it up with a bottle of red. If you can, let it sit for a little while, let the flavours mingle and get to know each other and then enjoy it with plenty of ice, a big glass and a long afternoon to yourself. The second of my recommendations takes us over to the Canaries. Now, I'm, this is a, a favourite of a friend of mine, which is why I've brought it up. So you might have seen this in the Duty Free liquor 43 sweet honeyed really delicious liqueur and you put it in uh, in the canary islands in a barraquito now a barraquito is a little coffee in the bottom you have a layer of condensed milk then you have a layer of the liquor 43 then you have a good shot of espresso and some frothy milk on top a little dark chocolate crumbled on top or even some cinnamon for a little spice and there you have it Going to guarantee to keep you going all night if that's what you want. Of course, when it comes to the sangria, you can do exactly what I did and cheat and buy yourself a bottle because it's got time to slice apples. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> I was engrossed in that. I think you all caught me slightly engrossed within that. She's cheeky, Charlie, isn't she? She's is cheeky, Charlie. She, mm. she knows. She knows her stuff. She does totally know her stuff. Now, have you stopped slurring those words? I'm trying to. Do you know the problem is because I've got fat cheeks? You get a bit of sugar in your cheeks. It's serious, this. <laughs> you get a bit of sugar in your fat little cheeks, and all of a sudden, everything really like it's going very much like that. So you try and compensate. And what? <laughs> and then you just, mm, let's just not. I've not had a drink for 14 weeks. I'm over excited that you had three bottles there. It's a good job you didn't give us those massive bottles. For God's sake, you'd have just down a lot of it. You know I would. <laughs> uh, so what have you been up to this week anyway? Because you've been asking what? me all the questions. Do you know, this week has been a, uh, a very sensible-ish week. Okay. I bought a new iron. Now, I know, boring. But this iron, you don't, no way, you don't have an ironing board for it. What do you mean? You literally put your clothes on this machine and you just go, and it just steams. So you've got a steamer. Is it not an iron? No. <laughs> I did, and as well, this is going to send everybody to sleep. I did an hour and a half worth of ironing yesterday. What the heck for? With my husband sat on the sofa. I thought a Hello, celebrity Justin. like you would have had someone to do it for you. <laughs> no. Oh. Actually, I did, but then when lockdown happened, and I've had to start doing my own stuff. Oh, so, wow. you know, if you see me with wrinkles on, that's probably why. 
Well, I can use your steamer now, can't I? You can use the steamer. It's, it's a lot quicker. <laughs> it is. It's, it's done all my caftans and everything for me. Haven't we bought random things in lockdown, though? Don't you think the caftans made a good appearance? What caftan? Caftan. Everybody's wearing caftans these days. Men, I, women. I, I, am I wearing a caftan? Well, it, it would be on a little person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are they wearing caftans maybe because we've all eaten a lot in lockdown and that's the only thing that kind of fits us? Oh, dearie me. Well, yeah, it's true. It's, I suppose it's true. What we should do at this point, I suppose, is have a look at our lovely comments from our lovely viewers. Hello, oh, viewers, fantastic. by the way. Oh, How are you? Thank you for spending some time with us. Let's go right to the uh, very top and see what people were saying, shall we? Uh, right then, we'll leave it with um, Chris Bring or whatever you want. We'll comment on it. I love the fact that we've got to that age now yeah, can we where we both forward? have to lead forward. <laughs> this week that's it it's like it's the ooh. peak of the week in deep cat it is the peak of oh, the week bless her. isn't oh, that sweet you. it who really else is. have we got go on who else Eat have we got us. let's have a look you just bring them up We've got hugo mcqueen there i think I as know. well that's he had to say this week hugo mcqueen has said i think we need a new gay comedy based in uh, manchester based on the village i think uh, that you don't need a uh, a program about it because it's there for real life <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Was it nice going back onto Canal Street? Because like, you went out. Shall didn't I tell you? you my experience? It was the weirdest thing ever. Uh, we had to book for a bar that I've worked at for, for many a time. And yeah, you had to book. Yeah. And then you get, it's, zzz, how hot are you? You're like, what the heck? Oh, going? did you get your temperature? Oh, yeah, taken? To get to, I was all right. I think it was 36 something point three. I think I'm all right. I'm definitely not as hot. What if you had a hot flush though and got all excited because you were going to the pub? You know, we'd pub for ages and you got a sweat on. I know. And then we went and sat down and they put us in a corner. Right. And nobody puts baby in the corner. Right. And they put me in a corner and they come and serve you. Now this I am liking in the village. Yeah. This I am liking. I do like to be waited on hand and foot, as you know. Yeah. Yep. Did you have to queue? Did I have to what? Queue. Did you have to queue? Uh, no, I didn't have to queue. No. Oh, okay. Because we booked tables so we knew what time we're there for. Right. We had to book a double slot. Okay. <laughs> we had to book a double slot because um, we wanted to be there for a longer space of time than the allocated, you see. It still had the same atmosphere? No, because I wasn't entertaining. Right. Soon will be. Soon will be. Who else have we got? Those comments. Let's, Let's have, have a look. look. I oh, do you know, that makes there. perfect sense. Yes. yes. Right. Benny Dorm live at the palace. Yes. yes. Look at that. Benny Dorm live. At the that was good, wasn't it? Did you enjoy the musical about it all? I did. I really, really did. Yeah. I just think it brought it to life, and it, you you felt more closer to the action, like you do with live theatre. Yeah, and thank God they've had an injection of cash. That's all I can say. The theatre and the arts this week. Tell more people about that. Tell people about it. Do you know what the figures? I are think here? it's one point four billion, or is it five? No, actually, I think it's five billion has been injected into the arts. And by God, do they need it? Because and what does that, that mean, brings then? in so much revenue to places. Because right. and it, so many people have, have jobs that they've had to, you know, be furloughed from jobs. Some people have lost jobs yeah. in the industry, and that just means that there's a pot. Now there's a fund that can be given to different like venues and theatres to keep them going at the moment because they're really struggling to survive a lot of them. And because we know their struggle, next week we are doing a full on special about hashtag save the arts. Mm -hmm. um, so we're bringing it onto here. We've got um, a lady that you might know from um, Benny Dorm and all, uh, not Benny Dorm, from Absolutely Fabulous. Uh, she's called Harriet Thorpe, everybody. She was the Absolutely. Yes. I do remember that. And yeah. she used to be in the British Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the yeah, children yeah. in the draw. Dark hair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah children in the draw. That's Harriet Thorpe. She's coming on. We're also welcoming back the guys from Hope Mill from Theatre. Hope Mill Theatre. They're gonna be with us as well. Um it, it's we, we've got a full show of it. We really have. We have, but getting back to theatres and stuff, uh, it's it is gonna be quite a while until we get people back in theatres. Yeah. But it is confusing at the moment that people can go to bars and kind of like sit and you can't do it with theatre. It's, it's all good times. It's, uh, I love the theatre. I, I miss the theatre. I miss it. I want it to be back. I miss so it so much. Soon. I want my Lowry back. I want my Opera House back. And I want my Palace Theatre back. Yeah, I want my Hope Mill as well. And I think I want my, um, my private box back as well at the Palace. I really do. Oh, yeah, box do. five. Da, 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 box. Da, da, da. One lady that definitely doesn't need any uh, private box whatsoever 
is this absolute legend who started off everybody singing to us beautifully on a lovely program called X Factor. And she has fully joined us now, everybody. Please put your hands together. Welcome, Lucy Spragan. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Are you all right? Loving the headphones. headphones Thank you. I, I sort of panicked. I was like, oh, what can I use? But they're, they're big, but they do the, they do the job. Oh, how are you doing in lockdown, Lucy? Yeah, um, I've been doing. I've been doing all right. I mean, I, I do a lot of working out, so that's kind of been the, my main thing, my main focus in lockdown. Um, and yeah, lots of self s sort of work on myself, which I feel like a lot of people have been doing. Yeah, I mean, your fitness it has been incredible because you know we, we've seen pictures recently of you and and i am in envy of your six pack it's, it's just oh my god what is your secret i mean is it the training every day because i run but there's no six pack here no six pack no four pack um i think um i think i I feel like a bit of a cheat because I gave up drinking a year ago on the 28th of this month. And when I gave up drinking, I just, I got this, like, I just, woke, I went to Vegas with my friends and they were all hung over and I woke up really early in the morning and I was like, I have to get out of here. I've got such bad doom. So I went for a run and I ran like 2K, 2.4K. And I was like, I'm going to puke. I'm never going to do this again, ever. Um, and then the next day I did it and the next day and, I just got this fitness thing and but to be honest the abs just like sort of appeared and i feel like a bit of a fraud i've got to ask what does that feeling feel like when you first notice how much your body's changed and, and how good you suddenly look uh it's weird because i still look at, i i look in the mirror and i i still just see the same it's like because like the the physical changes that have happened to me have happened so quickly like over the last six months that i sort of look in the mirror and i see this like the same body if you know what i mean but like what i what i really like focusing on for me is like what i can lift how much further i can run or what my resting heart rate is like rather than it is enjoyable to look at all the differences and like i never thought that i would have like a six pack <laughs> Like even saying that is just like a bit of a joke, really. But, uh, well, it's not just made you look fantastic. It's also created like some focus in your mind because you've been really busy now with your music. You've got an album coming out, haven't you? Is it in October or autumn time? Called yeah. Justice? Has it made you more proactive? The fact that you've got into the fitness and had that focus. I, I've never been more focused in my life, to be honest with you. I, I've never. I never knew. I've always been a person who's just said I'm plagued with anxiety and depression and it's never going to change and I'm always going to be the same and some days I'm never going to want to get up and I'm, I'm, you know, and that was it. There was like this ceiling that I'd always hit and I gave up drinking and it's just opened up my world. So, yeah, like. So has it reduced the, um, and the anxiety and the depression then? Yeah, I mean, I still get anxious over things. The reason I'm in a sports bar is because I just hosted a, a fitness session for the um, BFBS, like the British Forces fitness thing, which, again, is wild. Um, but, like, yeah, like, it doesn't get rid of it. I was anxious to all of today because I was like, oh, I'm doing this session. I don't know what I'm doing. But, like, I can, I can resolve it and I can... I, can, I still get low, but I can get back out and find a way out. Yeah. Because I used to drink to, like, go, oh, do you know what? I'll deal with that tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So is that is that what the album title is about, Choices? Because you've kind of made those choices. Yeah. Or, yeah? Yeah. I, mean, I got it. I got it. Yay. <laughs> Have you changed um, the style of music at all then be, because of, you know, your change in mindset? Um, the music's definitely more, I mean, there are songs you can, like, run to, not that it's, like, house, it's not house music at all. It's not at all. It's the same kind of music, but there's different production on it, and there's a bit more attitude to it, really. I'm going through a divorce, and I am, like, going through this life change, and physical and mental changes that like I just kind of came out of nowhere 
And so choices is, you know, there's a song called Sober. It's about getting sober. There's a song called Run. It's about running. But it's more interesting than that. <laughs> it sounds like you're going through a lot of um, changes at the moment. But actually, from what you're saying, those changes are actually having a positive impact on you. Yeah. And when the when those things start happening, it's it's like you can be really scared about changes and choices that happen in life or you can just sort of like jump on the bobsleigh and just roll down the hill instead of trying to fight your way back up the ice and I guess that's what I did and and I honestly have never never felt like this before. Well I, I love the fact that you you've always seemed to keep it real Lucy because you know a lot of people when they go on a you know program like X Factor they, they take a certain path and you came out of that and then you, you spent a lot of time fostering have you is it 12 children that you fostered I think that's incredible you know you 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 seem to balance life and music in a good way um uh, well me and my ex-wife we we did fostering together where we lived in Stockport and like that was such a wild experience and it's something that I want to do when I am older or slash have a bit more time because I tour. I was last year, I was touring solidly for like 13 months. So it, it got really tough, but it, I think you have got to have a balance. And, and if you get like nice things in life and, and you've got, and you're privileged, then you should sort of take those privileges and, and distribute them where you can, if you can try and make a difference and it's a, it, it's kept you grounded mm -hmm. i think and wouldn't you say that i just think all my friends would just come in i've had if i uh, wasn't <laughs> <laughs> that's not the impression you give lucy at all. <laughs> no. i suppose what i really want to ask you is what's the ultimate dream and have you achieved it yet well do you know what it's a really funny question because I reckon a couple of years ago, I'd have been like, I want to be stratospheric. I want everybody to know who I am. And, uh, you know, I, I want multi-platinum records. And and that, like at the beginning of all this change, I sort of looked at my career and I was like, I'm a 28-year-old woman, woman f working in a music industry that's run by middle-aged white guys who, and there's there's like a, significant lack of opportunity in the touring scene anyway and like musicians in general we're so lucky if we even get to bloody do what we love and like performers if you get to get on a stage on a saturday night like how amazing is that and to me the definition of success changed and i feel like i'm a successful young woman i've played glastonbury twice i was supposed to be doing it for the third time this year, I was supposed to be touring Australia. I tour in America and Germany, and and I love my life. And that's, I just want to continue doing this, and that would make me happy. And did you ever think? Did you ever think, if you were talking to yourself ten years ago, maybe a bit further back, did you ever, did you ever think that you'd be able to say to yourself that this is where you'd get to? Ah, oh, I think me then I'd have been like, yeah, no, I'm going to be huge. No, <laughs> uh, I like. I was such, I was a pretty, I would say that I carried a lot of troubles with me until, uh, you know, a year or so ago. And 10, ten year ago me was a very interesting young thing. And I think I'd love to go back and just be like, chill out, just calm down and it'll all be all right. <laughs> Have you got plans then to do anything alongside the music with your fitness? Because obviously, you know, you said that you just did some bits for the for the British forces. Would you like to go and do some more fitness alongside it? Have you got time for it? Well, on the DL, I am doing the fitness program. I don't think I've told anyone that before. That is um, cool. This has been what? one show. Well done, Shell. Well done. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's really and, uh, cool. I'm working quite closely with the company. They did like Tony Bellews and Amy Childs videos um, and programs, but it's not going to be like a normal program. I'm going to be really open with people and be like, you know, you if you want to achieve your goals, you do not need to buy this program. Like, do it yourself. But I'm just going to be there, like acting like the journey. Yeah, yeah, and sort of like being in your ears and saying like, yeah, you're knackered, but come on, we can do this. Like, let's go and. It's going to be an online forum and it's going to be good. 
Well, you've got me signing up for it because I want that four to become a six. <laughs> you know what's even better than that? You've got me signing up for oh, it. Oh, I mean, baby. Hey. <laughs> I look good in Lycra. In a sparkle, you know. I want to wear that jacket for the programme, the fitness programme, actually. You let me know where to send it to, Flower. It can be yours. It's, it's a bit warm. It's denim. It's not a good <laughs> idea under studio lighting, but it covers a multitude of sins, which you don't have to do anymore, uh, do you? You may have done a workout, but there's not an ounce of sweat on you, but there's a lot on Belinda. <laughs> 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 Lucy's bragging, you've been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Thank lovely you. to be glowing and so happy. It's amazing. So good luck with the rest of it, yeah? Thank yeah. you so much. And uh, stay safe and stay well. Thank oh, you, you very too. much. The one and only Lucy Spraggan, everybody. Yay! I think I'm slightly in love with a woman. <laughs> I really do. She Me is too. fantastic. Oh, no. Eh? Do you know what? It, it is lovely to see how she's made such a turnaround, like she said, and, and come through that journey. I think it's really inspiring to others. It's one of the success stories of the press, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, we know she's had heartache, we know she's had struggles, we know she's had troubles, but to, to, to see her sort of emulating this glow of contentment yeah. is wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. So it's been a great, great show. It's I've loved every show. minute of it. It's uh, And the, the gin went down really well. It, it's still working its way through, which is probably why I'm using long words and not saying them correctly, like emulate. Is that a right word? <laughs> but we're definitely putting on a show next week, aren't we? we? Well, we are. Now, next week, we really want you to all get behind this because next week, man, that... Uh, next week, we are bringing you a, a show dedicated to hashtag Save the Arts. Um, obviously, the theatre industry and the arts industry in itself is going through a right tumultuous, there's another one for you, time at the moment. And we want you to get involved with this show. So we want you to send comments, ask questions. We have got some guests on as well. We've got the wonderful Harriet Thro Thorpe. Mm -hmm. Thorpe? Thorpe. We've It'll all... be like a heated debate. We are. We're going to discuss it. And we want you to be as open as you think. There is that many questions that... You know, I'm sure you're wanting answered, and we will do our best to answer yeah, them. Absolutely. So we look forward to that. We look forward to you guys joining us for that very special episode. And they can only see it one place, Belinda. And where is it? Well, indeed, they can only see it on <laughs> your, your Manchester. Manchester.